This video is going to give you more info and insight on order blocks than any video on the internet ever will. This is not just your run of the mill order block video because at the end, I'm going to be describing an idea that is original and from me. There's going to be a section of this video that is just the basics and you're going to learn it from the ground up and that section will be very similar to everything else online. However, this video is going to be the first public time I talk about my idea called projected defined ranges and I'm going to show you how to create create a trading strategy off of these projected defined ranges, utilizing order blocks in the most powerful way that you can utilize them. Also, even if you already use order blocks on a day to day basis, I would highly recommend you even watch the more beginner focused parts of this video because I'm going to make a bold assumption here. I think you're using order blocks wrong. Many people have a complete and gross misunderstanding of how to use them. And this video aims to also fix those misconceptions while also elevating your trading to a new level with the projected defined range idea that is mine. Now, the fact that I'm giving this away for free is on my part, probably a bad idea, but I think this is valuable. Very, very, very valuable. So I am going to give it away for free. If you do like the way that I explain things, the way that I teach, the way that I talk, anything that I'm doing, you can consider joining my discord down in the description where you will then find a link to my Patreon, where I have hundreds and hundreds of videos and hundreds of hours of educational content describing more in depth of how I trade. Without further ado, watch this throughout out the entire video. No part is filler and no part is skippable. And with that being said, hopefully this helps you in some way and I'll see you in the video. All right. So all a order block is in this case, in a bullish context, we'll look at a bearish context in a moment. All an order block is, is the lowest close down candle at the bottom of a range when price is bullish. And the second that price trades above the high of the lowest closed down candle in a range. That is when the order block gets gained. Now there's some edge cases to this, which we'll discuss. This is only the absolute basics of what an order block is in a bullish context. Now let's say price opened and traded down into this bullish order block. That is when you would look for a long. That's how you get an entry on something like a bullish order block. Okay. So price trades down into the bullish order block and that is a long. Now, like I said, there is some edge cases. So let's look at those now. So let's take an example like this, where you have a range that looks like this, the bullish order block in this case, a lot of people would mark as this particular candle or this level or this level. This is not the case because of what I just said. The order block is the lowest closed down candle in a bullish context. So you're actually going to be looking at this candle and in the future and a little bit later in this video, you're going to learn about the different levels inside of an order block, like the mean threshold and how you could hold the mean threshold before the order block gains to let you in on if it's going to gain or not. Now that's a little bit too advanced for right now, but in this particular case, this would be the order block level. This candle would be the bullish order block not these candles. These candles are nothing. These candles are not order blocks and they're not anything. They're just candles and price could trade into that bullish order block like this. Let's say price opens trades down into the high. That is the bullish order block inside of this range. Why? Because it's the lowest close down candle in a range on the bottom. Okay. Price could come back up. Now this is the bullish order block. Let's take a look at a bearish order block. So this would be a bearish order block. Okay. It's the highest close up candle at the top of the range and the bearish order block gets gained or it becomes active when you trade through the low of the candle. Not when you trade through this, not when you close through it, the second that you trade through it, it becomes gained. So that means even in the same candle, if it traded up into it, that is testing into the bearish order block and it can expand down. But typically what you'll see is something more so like this where you will see price later on trade into that bearish order block. Okay. And then the edge case example, just like it was down here is the same exact thing with bearish order blocks as well. So if the example looked a little bit more like this, this would be the bullish order block. Why? A lot of people might say it's this particular candle, but it's not. This candle is nothing. And the reason why is because this is the highest close up candle in the top of the range, just like before, this is the lowest closed down candle in the bottom of the range that makes this the order block and that makes these candles nothing. Just like how on top, 
This is the order block because it's the highest close up candle at the top of the range. This candle is nothing. Okay, so that's what a order block is. Now let's get into the particular levels that exist inside of order blocks. So inside of an order block, you have a couple of different levels. Let's take this one at the bottom of the chart here as an example. There's three different levels inside of any given order block. For a bullish order block, you have the high, which just represents the most extreme part of the order block. So this entire candle is an order block, but there's particular levels that we look for, and one of them is the exact high. Okay, this should be a sensitive area. If you're bullish um, and the market is moving up, price should use this area as sensitivity. You also have the opening price of the candle, right? Price could come down to the opening price and also hold off of it. Typically, you're going to be using the opening price when the wick is a lot shorter. And then there's also one more. And that's the exact middle point of the entire candle right here. So you could use a Fibonacci tool like this. These are my settings if you want to know what they are. Drag it from the high end of the candle to the low of the exact candle and take the midpoint exactly. And that is what's known as the mean threshold of this bullish order block. Now, we'll talk later about the implications of each of these levels and when you would use one versus the other, but currently and right now, just know that all three of these levels inside of a bullish order block are going to be sensitive points, just like for bearish order blocks, where you have the low, the opening price, and the mean threshold. And the market could have tested the opening price, it could have tested up into the mean threshold, it could have done anything like that. Now let's talk about when you would remove an order block from your chart and no longer use it. And by the way, if you're a little bit confused, don't worry, there will be a plenty of actual chart examples in this video as well. Um, this is just a very general, broad theoretical overview so that you can follow the rest of this video without being confused. So let's take an example like this, which is a bit of an edge case here, where Price has gone all the way through this order block, even wicked above the high of it right here, right? And then we came all the way back down. We closed over all these levels. A lot of people would remove this as the order block. But for me, this is still the order block in the range. Why? Because it's still the highest up close candle in the particular range. So when price leaves this range again and comes back, this to me is still the active order block in the market, okay? The only time that you would remove an order block level is not when it's tested, but when a new up candle closes above it. So if instead the market looked a little more something like this, at this point this order block would no longer be valid because it has a close higher than it. You see how this candle closed higher than it? That At that point that's when you would remove an order block from your chart. Not when it wicks above it, not when it opens above it like this, like if there's a gap and the market opens above an order block, you don't remove it then. It's when a new up close candle closes above it and vice versa for a down close candle, okay? You would not remove this bullish order block from your chart until you had a bearish candle close beneath it. And the second a candle closes beneath it, beneath the body of it, that is when you can now remove this as the order block and this is the new potential order block in the range. Okay, so with that being said, I think it's about time we get on the charts, see some examples, and talk about the different levels inside of an order block and when to use things like the high, the open, and the mean threshold. And also, how to know if an order block is going to be more high probability than an other order block and when to use them in general. All right, here is an example of a bullish order block in the market. This is going to be a very typical example, and trust me, Later on in this video, all of the stuff that we're talking about right now may seem very basic and it's like people have already talked about this and whatnot. Later on in this video, we will be talking about things that nobody talks about and things that make these much more powerful than just normal support and resistance or normal anything. Later in this video, you're going to see how I really use order blocks and how I use them for predictive power and bias purposes on an intraday and long term basis. But we have to go through the basics before we could get through the advanced stuff. And the basics is just identifying order blocks in general. So in this particular range of price, uh, the market is moving up. That's the first key. You need a bullish market for bullish order blocks to work, of course. Now, this candle right here 
price falls down, this is the lowest closed candle in this particular range of price, right? So when the market trades above what? When the market trades above the high of this candle is when this order block is gained as a level. So at that very moment, when the market trades above the high, and again, later in this video, we'll show you how to know if an order block is gonna gain or not, which is when these become very powerful. In theory and, technical, and, and technically, for the levels in an order block to become active, you first need to trade above the high. So boom, the second you trade above the high, every level inside of this order block becomes active. What does that mean? Well, you also have the open that's active now, but you also have the mean threshold that's active now as an order block level. So there you go. The second that the price trades above this high, all these levels are active. And notice how in this particular case, price went above the high and traded directly down into the mean threshold, down to the mean threshold again, down to the mean threshold once again. And again, later on in the video, we'll talk about what it means when price trades into the mean threshold versus when it doesn't, etc. But this is the first example of an order block that I was going to show you. And the next example just so happens to be in, for example, this range here where price pushes down, creates the lowest down close candle in this swing range. That's what I mean when I say range in this swing low. This is the lowest down close candle. Now, you would also have a candle right here, which you could class as an order block as well, because this is the lowest close in that particular range. This, however, is something different. This is a different part of TA that I will talk about in the future. Now, in this particular swing low right here, this is the lowest down close candle. So the second that price trades above the high of it, all the levels in the order block become active. And you see that price trades above the high and trades back down into where? The open, and it could have also traded down into the mean threshold. And again, later in the video, we'll talk about how to know if a order block is gonna gain or it's not going to gain. Let's show another example here. So in this case, in the swing low range here, price first off pushes down. This is the lowest down close candle in this particular range that creates the order block right here. Okay, price trades up above the high of that order block. Now all the levels inside of it are activated. So even here, when we trade above it and then trade back down, this price movement back down is testing into this order block. And you also activate all the other levels. So that includes the mean threshold, which later on in the market, you trade right to where the mean threshold of that order block. And you also create a new one in this range right here. So what is the order block in this swing range here? Well, some people might say it's this candle. It's not. Some people might say it's this candle. This is the candle it is. Why? And it's definitely not this, right? Going into the future, this is not the order block. And in fact, here you wouldn't even be looking for an order block to be used at all. But that's for a later time. In this particular swing range here, this candle right here, October 4th, is the order block because this is the lowest down close candle in the range and it has the biggest body. If both of the candles are at the same exact close, let's say you have two down close candles that are closing at the same exact price, you're going to use the one with the bigger body. In this particular case, this is the lowest down close candle and the biggest body candle. So the second that price trades above the high of it right here, that's when any price movement back down into it is considered a test into the order block. So the second you trade above that high, that's when you activate things like the open and the mean threshold. And as you can see in this case, you get real close to the mean threshold. You just miss it by a tiny bit. And that's actually good. And we'll talk about that again later in the video. But the mean threshold is called a threshold for a reason. And very often you don't even want price to test into it. But the second it trades above the high, that's now when any retracements back into this range of price, that's when it becomes active. That is when it becomes an active order block. Let's take a look at a handful more bullish examples, and then we'll look at some bearish examples, and then we'll start to dissect the differences between the open, the high, and the mean threshold of a particular order block. Now, I'm taking you over to another market. This is crude oil. This also works on every market. You could be trading crypto. You could be trading Forex. You could be trading index futures. You could be trading commodities. You could be trading anything, the traditional stock market, anything, and this will work in all markets. Now, this is a great example because this showcases um, the importance of knowing what is the correct order block. A lot of people would instinctively jump to this one. This is completely wrong. This is not the order block. 
this is not the order block, this is not the order block, this is not an order block. None of these are the order blocks because they're all encompassed by this large down candle. And this large down candle in this swing is the lowest close price in the range. This down candle is the order block. So when you have this, the second that price trades above it, that's when it becomes active. And notice that the second you trade above it, price comes back down, trades into it, trades into it, trades into it, trades into it. But you also activate the other level. So the second price trades above it, you also activate uh, the open. And you would have also activated the mean threshold, which price did not get down into. But notice how because now that we have the right order block, this is being respected a lot more, right? We hold it right when we get above it, hold it again here, hold it again here. We dip lower and where do we go to? To the tick, we go to the open of the correct order block. We get above it, we hold the high, we hold the high again, and this is being used to accumulate price action. And this does not get removed from the chart until price would close beneath this candle. This could stay on here forever. Price could come back and go up and then come all the way back here. And this would still be on the chart, even all the way back here until a candle closed beneath this particular point. Okay. This candle is nothing. This is not an order block. This is not in anything. This is the order block because it's the lowest close candle in the particular range. Okay. Let's look at one more bullish. Let's look at one more bullish example before we hop into looking at some bearish examples. And then again, we'll start looking into the differences between the levels, when to use each one and some of the more powerful ways you can use order blocks in your trading. All right. So this example is slightly less straightforward, but if you follow the principles, it should be just about as straightforward as the other ones. So what is the order block in this range. The lowest close down close candle is the bullish order block. Does this candle close low? Yes, it does. But this one closes lower. So this is the order block level inside of the range. So the second that price trades above this high, all the levels inside of this order block get activated. And yes, you can make the argument that price trades down into here more accurately. But at the end of the day, this is the correct order block. And the only reason something like this even holds is because it's within the correct order block. So this would be the correct order block in this particular range, just like up here, right? Just like up here, this is the lowest closed candle in the range. So the second that price trades above this high, this is now the correct order block and any movements back down into it is testing into that order block before price runs higher. Just like up here, this is the correct order block because this is the lowest closed candle in the range. You start to notice now they're starting to get degraded. Eventually, they roll over. This trades down to something lower, which is actually a higher time frame piece. We'll talk about time frame uh, analysis and differences later in this video. But uh, for the most part, this should all be pretty straightforward. And if you know about order blocks, this should all be along the lines of what you already know. Now, first, let's get into a handful of bearish examples. We're not going to be doing as many bearish examples as bullish examples because Really, it's just flipped on its head, so I don't want to waste your time. However, after we get through the bearish examples, we are going to start talking about some of the unique ways that I use order blocks in a much more powerful way than is normally utilized. Let's get into those bearish examples and then let's get into the more fun things. So here is all right. So here is a bearish example of an order block. OK. Price has shown a willingness to start moving down. That's important because when price is moving up, bearish order blocks do not work. Just like when price is moving down, bullish order blocks do not work. A directional bias is absolutely necessary for these to have any sort of probability and any sort of predictive power in the marketplace. And if you want a video on directional bias, go ahead and drop in the comments if you want that. And maybe one day, I will make that because my ability to have a long term directional bias is bar none. Uh, one of the best I've ever seen. I'll, I'll be right on a directional bias for hundreds of days straight, only to be wrong for a couple days in a row when the trend is switching. But I'm very good at a directional bias. And if that's a video that you guys are interested in the future, tell me. But these things only work with a directional bias in mind. So uh, in this example, the order block the bearish order block in this range is this particular candle right here, because there is two candles. And some people would say, 
No, it's this one. This is the order block. Nope. This is the order block. This is the order block because this is where the highest up close candle is in the range. This one closes here. This one closes higher. So this is the particular order block. And the second that price trades down below the low of that candle is when all the levels inside of it are activated and also the mean threshold, which I'm not going to mark, but would line up right about here. And you'll start to notice that the mean threshold sometimes gets held before the order block is gained. And that is a prelude to what we're going to be talking about later in the video. Now, as you can see, price trades down, gains the order block, comes back up, tests into it, and that leads to a massive sell-off in the price. Let's look at a few more bearish examples. So this is Euro dollar uh, on a monthly chart. Yes, a big time frame, but it's just an example here. Um, back in 2008 and 2009, uh, we had this order block get developed in the market. So what's so special about this? Notice how this is the highest candle in the range. We gain it when we trade through the low, right? So we're not looking at this. If you thought that this was the order block, it never got traded into. Why? Because this is not an order block. This is actually nothing. Okay. This candle is quite literally nothing. This, this is literally nothing. Okay. You, this is not an order block. This is not anything. This is the order block because it's the highest closed up candle in the range. Mark the low of it. And this was created in 2008. And in 2009, EURUSD came right up into it, traded up into it, and sold off in a big way, leaving behind another bearish order block, which got gained when you traded beneath the low of it. And price ultimately came right up into the mean threshold of this particular order block leaving behind another order block in this range in 2011, which gets gained when? When you trade through the low, which in 2011, traded back up into it, back up into here, and pushed. And a lot of times you'll see this kind of trailing effect with order blocks being created over and over and over again, right? Um, but this is really the big example that I wanted to show here. Now let's get one more kind of weird example and then we'll move on to the more interesting topics in this particular video all right let's look at this and i'm switching markets a lot because i want um i want you to get a gist that this is working in every market at all times so this is literally soybeans dude who who trades soybeans i don't know there's somebody that trades soybeans future actually i'm kind of interested in soybeans. i think it's a nice chart anyways totally off topic but we have this range right here which creates an order block. You should be able to see that just fine. Price trades into it in 1981 and then trades back into it in 1988, seven years later, right? And uh, price gets respected here and it leaves behind another order block. So pop quiz, what is the order block in this particular range? It's this candle here. And when price trades right beneath the low of this candle is when it gets activated. So you might look at this and say, oh yes, try price traded up into it here and blah, blah, blah. But even within this range, it traded up into it. Look closely. Price gains the order block in July of 1988. This is September of 1988. It gains in July. So that means all the levels become activated. In the next two months later, we trade up into the mean threshold and sell off. We get below the order block. And we hold it again in 1989. And then that leads to a massive sell-off. Ultimately, eventually it gets ripped through as all things do when the trend changes. But for these years and for these moments in time, this was the active order block in the moment and it led to a major sell-off in this market. Just like here, this is the order block in this range, right? We could use this example right now. It gets gained when you trade through the low here. It gets gained when you trade through the low right there and all the levels get activated. So that means everything, even the mean threshold, which we just miss trading up into, which we'll talk about very soon. So that's it for the bearish examples of, of order blocks. And part of the reason we use order blocks is not to look for a perfect test. Like something like this might be like, well, this thing didn't test perfectly. How do you get an entry on this? Part of the reason we use order blocks is not to look for a perfect test, but to have some sort of confirmation of bias. So in this particular example, yes, we gain the order block. That could give you confirmation that, hey, we might be running lower into the market. So that could let you in on, hey, if I could get short setups above the order block low, 
then these are going to be much higher probable shorts because I know that I'm shorting within the range of this order block level that just got gained. So keep that in mind when you're using these levels is that we're not looking for perfect tests. Nothing is ever considered tested. They stay on your chart forever, right? Until they get closed. Like this order block here will stay on the chart until it gets closed. I'll, I'll let you in on exactly when it does get closed. This is the close of the candle. This order block goes away. This order block is no longer valid. Look at this. It gets tested once in 1981. Uh, it gets tested twice in 1988. It gets tested three times in 1997. It gets tested four times in 2002. And then you start to see the breaking of it. And eventually when price closes above the uh, close of the order block, the highest close in, in, in this range, it closes above, it then comes back down, retest it, which we'll also talk about, and fires and rockets up for the uh, for a very long time to come. Uh, and, and you'll see that pattern a lot where an order block gets um, used up a bunch, and then it gets broken, and then it gets retested, and then it goes. But that is the very, very, very basics of order blocks. Now you know how to define them on a chart, how to look at them. The next thing we're going to get into is the differences between the uh, the lower the high, the open, and then the mean threshold. When to use them? What does the mean threshold mean? And um, when one is going to get tested over the other? Then we're going to get into what makes me a little bit different with order blocks and how I use them in a very unique way that has much more power, in my opinion. Okay, so let's get into it. Alrighty, so as we've already spoke about, there is three levels within each particular order block. Uh, in, in this case, we're only going to be using bullish examples and just flip it on its head for bearish order blocks. Okay, there's the high, there's the open, and then there's the mean threshold. And again, the mean threshold is just the exact midpoint from the highest point of the candle to the lowest point of the candle. That is the mean threshold of the order block. So the high and the open are very easy ones, and we'll talk about them right now. Um, and what I'm going to describe here is a very simple rundown of them. If you want a little bit more of a detailed rundown and really how to know when to use each level, this is just going to be a very basic run through. Um, you could go ahead and join my Discord down in the description, where I have plenty of videos where I walk through particular trades that I take, and I have a lot more educational content, hundreds of hours of educational content, and hundreds of videos of educational content. Now, in this particular example, the high and the open are very easy. Typically, you're just going to use, typically, price is going to want to trade to the open of the order block if the wick is very short. And then more often than not, if the wick of an order block is very long like this, Price will tend to just come down into the high or slightly pierce the high before moving up. But usually if the wick is very short, it'll go to the open. And usually if the wick is very long, it'll just suffice to trade to the high. Now, obviously, if the wick is very short, you might as well just take the high. Because why would you risk not being in a trade just because it's a couple ticks away? Now, obviously, other reasons uh, that I'm not going to get into here include things like maybe the high of this, um, maybe the wick coincides with another high time frame level or a fair value gap or an inversion fair value gap or another wick level or something of that nature. And maybe the open doesn't coincide with anything. Then if there's more confluence for one of these levels, you'd use one of them over the other. But really, um, another part of it is just risk management. When you trade on an order block, your stop loss goes right below the order block level, right? So if I get long on the high of the order block, my stop loss goes here. If I get long on the open of the order block, my stop loss goes here. So really, at the end of the day, um, another argument for this could be if you want your risk reward to be a little bit higher and have a little bit of a tighter stop, you could go for the open, but you're risking missing even entering the position. And if you want to just get in the position and you don't really care as much about the risk reward, uh, you could just enter on the high and the high is going to be much more likely to get you in a trade versus the open is going to potentially offer a tighter stop bigger risk reward where this gets interesting is when we start talking about the mean threshold so again the mean threshold is the exact middle of the candle highest high to lowest low this example this level right here 17622.5 is the mean threshold of this candle and what the mean threshold represents is a point in the order block a candle should not violate by a body closing 
So what do I mean by that? All right, so for this example, I removed the high end of this order block and I removed the open of the order block and I just left the mean threshold here. So in general, the mean threshold is another point of sensitivity, but it should be the point in the order block for the order block to succeed where you don't see the mean threshold violated by a candle body close. In this particular example, you wicked through it and that's totally fine. Wicking into the mean threshold is permitted, but when things get a little bit, uh, I guess, spicy or when things get a little bit wrong or how you can anticipate potentially an air or an order block starting to fail is if this would have closed beneath with a candle closure. Uh, if this closes beneath the mean threshold with a candle closure, that is typically and not always. Uh, this is very important. You could close beneath the mean threshold and still have an order block work. But typically, if an order block gets its mean threshold closed, that is early indication that potentially this order block is failing. You are going to see many examples where the mean threshold closes and the order block still works. Again, on average though, and this game is a game of probabilities, if the mean threshold gets closed, the probabilities indicate that potentially that order block is going to fail, and if you're in a position, maybe you should get out. Now, everything that we've talked about up until this point is very normal and very basic, but the mean threshold of an order block holds a lot more, uh, I guess, not magic, the mean threshold of an order block holds a lot more analytical power than most people ever realize, and what I'm about to talk about is something I've never seen anybody talk about. And what I'm about to talk about is a great way to start utilizing order blocks in order to have a better understanding of bias intraday and very, very long term. What I'm about to talk about is the very introduction of a concept that I coined called projected defined ranges. Now, this is a extremely light introduction to projected defined ranges. And if you want to learn more about projected defined ranges in the future, you are going to have to join my discord down in the description. This is going to be a very simple introduction and it's only going to be showcasing order blocks. Projected defined ranges go much further and much deeper and are much more accurate than most things ever will be. So now that you know the basics about order blocks, you know the terminology, you know how to identify them, you know how to see them on a chart. Let's get into what I believe to be one of the more powerful use cases of order blocks and how you can understand if they're going to gain or not gain and how you could be entered in an order block before the order block gets gained in order to participate in the first move. So let's get right into that part of the video. So projected defined ranges and order blocks. You finally made it. The point of the video where order blocks go from just something that you enter on to something that could help inform you with long-term directional biases that produce major moves in massive directional price swings. What is a, a, a PDR or a projected defined range? Now I gave you a hint early in the, earlier in the video that when it comes to order blocks, Part of projected defined ranges has to do with the mean threshold of a order block. All right, I promise you we're going to get onto the charts and look at real examples in a moment, but you must understand some theory before we do. Now, what I have set up here is an example that's going to show you how to use projected defined ranges with order blocks. Projected defined ranges with order blocks are usually only, only very useful when you have a large time frame order block that you want to know if it's going to gain or not. So in this case, let's imagine we have this weekly down candle, okay, that we think could turn into an order block. Right now it's not it's not a gained order block because we would need to we would need to trade through the high. But this could be a large range, right? If this is a weekly from from here all the way to the high is a massive range of price. That could be hundreds and hundreds of points or if you're trading forex hundreds and hundreds of pips or if you're trading crypto thousands of dollars of price how can we use projected defined ranges to understand if price is going to move from here all the way up 
to here? And how can we capitalize on that? By taking a trade into the gaining of an order block and beyond. So the mean threshold of an order block has a lot more, I guess you could say, uses than what first meets the eye. Before an order block is gained, before it's gained, you can utilize the mean threshold of the ungained order block to predict if the order block is actually going to gain. What the fuck do I even mean? Let me show you. Let's say price in this weekly candle trades up into this range and then comes down and sits around here for a while. What would that look like on a lower time frame? Well, that would look like this. Price would have traded up, got above the mean threshold of the ungained order block, and started to hold. This holding of the mean threshold of the ungained order block creates an accumulation phase that's target is to gain the high time frame order block. So in my projected defined range theory, this creates a point A with a projected range to go and gain this order block at point B. So now we have a range of price from A to B because holding the mean threshold on a lower time frame before it's actually gained indicates the willingness and the want for price to go and gain this. But that is not all. That's just where this gets started, right? Even this alone is hugely beneficial. And even this alone provides opportunities for a trading setup and a trading setup that me myself partake in, which is, hey, if I see the mean threshold of a high time frame order block holding and it's accumulating and an entry setup gets found in here, which if you want me to do a video on particular entry setups, Right. This is more ideas forming and how to utilize these concepts. If you want me to do a video on how to form entry ideas, go ahead and drop a comment down in the description. However, this creates a range of accumulation. If I could find an entry here, I know that price is potentially wanting to go gain the order block whose mean threshold it was accumulating off of before the order block got gained. But again, like I said, this is only the beginning because the real power of projected defined ranges is when you have the projected defined range because now we have a point a and a point b so what i just talked about although not commonly talked about and I, in fact i'm the only trader that i think talks about this this alone is not projected defined ranges this is not my theory my theory is once you have two price points, the, if you if this level holds, we should go to this. Once you have an idea like that, you can now start to implement and utilize projected defined ranges in order to understand where price is going to stop and accumulate out for the second time. So what I mean by that is if you have this point A and a point B, you could draw a fib from point A to point B, and now you have the middle. Right, this is the middle of the defined range that you have. Okay, the projected defined range is from point A to B. Okay, and now you have the middle of that. In theory, under the guise of projected defined ranges, this is where the actual accumulation will take place to bring you into point B. Please stick with me if this is confusing. We will look at a handful of examples on the chart in just a minute. Okay, but you have to understand the theory behind it first. So what I'm saying is that price will likely want to target this middle point, get above it, come down and accumulate on this level before going to point B. So this is a second range of accumulation that it gives you. And this is actually my preferred place to play the projected defined range in an order block. Because when you're accumulating on here, it's not necessarily confirmed. Now, it's very likely that accumulation seen on the mean threshold before it's gained will lead to a gaining of the order block. But once you get above the projected defined range level, it becomes exponentially more probable that if you witness accumulation on the midpoint between point A and point B, that price will actually trend upwards and trade into point B to gain the actual order block level. And I personally like trading inside of here. Okay. 
So this is the theoretical view of how to use projected defined ranges with order blocks. And the first example I want to show you is a massive example that's allowed me to have the correct bias on NASDAQ for the last 130 days straight. So as I said, projected defined ranges are very much applicable when you're utilizing high time frame levels because those are what's going to give you the most range in order to play your idea off of. So the yearly chart on NASDAQ early in mid 2023, this was the yearly chart and this down close candle was the order block that we were trying to gain. What do I mean by that? Well, if we would have traded above this high, then we now have a yearly order block that we've gained and can utilize to hold us up going into the future. If you're trying to follow along and you're on the NASDAQ chart, it is in Q1, okay, with B adjust turned on and set turned off. B adjust when you're trading futures should always be turned on. Exactly like what I said with projected defined ranges, you also have the mean threshold of this candle. So notice how when we drop down to a lower time frame, and this just so happens to be a daily, and go back to the yearly for example, before this order block is gained, before it's gained, we came above the mean threshold of that potential order block and we held the mean threshold of it. So this sets into motion a point A and a point B. We now have a projected defined range in motion. We're expecting that from holding 14,408.50 right here, price should in theory trade all the way up to 17,575 and gain the yearly order block if projected defined ranges is correct, right? Holding the mean threshold before the order block is gained should onset a price move up into the gaining of that. Now, this is a very high time frame, isn't it? Now you can see the power because this is a 21% move on index futures or quite literally over like 3,100 ticks. This is an, this is a, or 3,100 points. This is a ridiculously large move. These are daily candles, okay? These are daily candles, and this is the type of move that we're predicting with projected defined ranges, which is my theory. So, what's next that I told you? Now that we have a point A and a point B, we could look for the midpoint of that. So, 1,408.50, and this should be exact, to 499.75. There we go. It gives us this particular level, and usually with projected defined ranges, this is kind of a, a side note. I personally like making them single thick dash lines. Okay. If you ever see a single thick dash line on my screen, it's a projected defined range level. So this is tradable. Like if you get along down here and you're aware of projected defined ranges, you understand that your target should be all the way up here at 17,499.75. Now, the first way that this gets confirmed is if price trades from point A to above the halfway point and then could come down, accumulate on here and that should lead to a run into point B. So let's see what happens. Press play. Boom. Price gets above the midpoint between point A and point B. The next part of this is to see if there's a willingness to come back down inside of the midpoint, which would be that accumulation to take us to point B. This was the first stage of accumulation. This is going to be the second stage of accumulation for price to run into 17,499.75. Okay. And what does price do? It comes right back down into where? Right back down to that midpoint. So how this is so powerful is because now you should be pretty damn convicted that this yearly order block is going to go gain after this holds. So you could drop down on a lower time frame like this, and this is how you could start to use lower time frame order blocks to gain higher time frame order blocks. And this is a valid system and a valid strategy if you, if you wanted it. Um, we swept a bunch of liquidity, which I have a video about in my other, uh, I have a video about on my channel, right? We swept liquidity. Point A has already been onset, so we're already looking to point B. We traded down into the midpoint, which is that second stage of accumulation. This was the first. These are connected. Now this being hit should onset the run to 17,499.75, should it not? Okay drop down to a lower time frame. This is the lowest candle in the swing low, which gives us our order block right here. 
So when price comes back down into that daily order block, we could be long with the understanding that the high time frame is already on set a move to 499. So we could enter this long with a take profit at 17,499. And this is the absolute power of projected defined ranges. A very simple concept, but an exceedingly powerful one nonetheless. Um, right. And we get this whole huge pullback. And the great thing is, even on this pullback, we could be we could be pretty convicted that this is just a pullback. And uh, if you were in my Discord, we were looking for longs right about here. And a longer term uh, continuation to continue price higher because we knew that the projected defined range was in play. Okay. We could be convicted that there is a pullback and we could feel a lot more safe buying in this range, right? It could be this order block, it could be this fair value gap, it could be the higher inversion fair value gap on the monthly that's in play in this particular case. It could be the monthly uh, media rebalance that's going on. But either way, it should be bringing us up into 74.99. Now, I want to mention right now, this is a very, very basic level of projected defined ranges. It goes much, much deeper than this, okay? And if you want to learn about it deeper than this, go ahead and join my Discord down in my description. It is a Patreon video, um, and it is on the Patreon. However, again, I have hundreds of videos of there. I put a lot of work into it, and that's why it's paid. Um, I also want to pay well questions because I don't have all day. I can't answer questions from everybody. Um, it's 30 bucks. I try to make it affordable. Um, you get all the videos. So I'm giving this out for free, but if you want to learn more, because this, this concept, my concept projected fund ranges goes much deeper than this. You're going to have to join the Patreon. Now let's go over a handful more examples of projected fund ranges so that you can get the hang of this a little bit more. We'll go over one more bullish example, and then we'll go over a bearish example to end the video. All right, let's use this particular candle as an example. Okay. So we're inside of a larger time frame projected defined range, and this is the daily chart. And let's say we were trading on the day of January 18th, 2024. Okay. This candle just came down and traded into the lower portion of this wick, which we won't talk about, but for anybody curious, uh, the level is this one right here. And on the day, okay, I don't like talking about things that are hindsight. That is not very much me. On the day we were looking at this level two, I was looking at 16,690.25 to be low a day, and it was, okay? And then I was looking for this order block to be gained. Well, it's not an order block yet. No, it's not. But if this range creates a swing low here and price trades above, this will be an order block in the future, okay? So going into the next day, we could start to look at things like the mean threshold of, which is the exact halfway point. Okay, and we can start to look at things at the high, right? So we drop down into a lower time frame, and we could say, this is the start of the new day. And notice how price comes down right away to the mean threshold of the ungained order block. Early in the day, very early, this is Asia session, this could start to let you in and keen you in that, hey, price is going to very likely run for these highs and gain that daily order block going into the day today. So... What can we start to do? Well, this gives us a projected defined range. It gives us a point A and it gives us a point B, right? The mean threshold of the ungained daily order block here is starting to hold. So that gives us a projected defined range of 16,835.75 to 16,982, right? Which is a massive move a massive move on index futures okay these are you know 15 minute hourly candles this is a this is quite a big move um that we're projecting from early 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 on in the day so what we could do here is now that we have a point a again and a point b is we could take the midpoint 16835 uh you want to make sure this is pretty perfect 16835.75 to 16982 flat so this gives us the 16,909 level. So what do we expect to see? Well, if this is actually going to happen, we should expect price to get above 16,909, come back down, accumulate on this in order to return back to point B and fulfill the constraints of the projected defined range, right? Point A is connected to point B. If we get over the midpoint and accumulate, we should fulfill the one below. So going further into the day here, let me get... 3575 back on here, 982 back on here. We 
you press play. And right here. So a little bit later on in the day, price starts to toy with the idea of getting above 909. It so far has not gotten uh, convincingly above, but now I would argue it has. So any movements back down into 909, so this little tap back down into 909, that to me, or this tap back down into 909, notice how it's coming back repeatedly. It's accumulating, right? It's creating the accumulation. This was the first stage of accumulation. This is the second stage of accumulation, right? Because point A to point B was onset right here, okay? And now we have this midpoint that's now accumulating again, which this is the setup that I enjoy the most, okay? This is one of my trading setups um, that I love playing, which is projected fine ranges, midpoint continuations, right? And this, any long positions in here should onset the move to trade up into 982. Another benefit of this is that you're entering the daily order block way before it's ever gained, okay? And as you notice, Price runs directly where? Up to gain that order block. Now, I want to show you something on a high time frame here. Notice that this is exactly where you would be entering, right? You would be entering on 909 in here. And what I want to show you is that, well, I can't see it here. What I wanted to show you is that price runs and never comes back down to that order block. So many times you'll see, well, price never came back down to this order block. How did people get long in here? They did. They did get long in here. But you were just unaware that they got long before the, the, before the order block ever even gained. And that is the absolute power of projected defined ranges. And that's why they're so, so critical to my trading and why I perform so many amazing, huge directional swing trades based on off of this projected defined range idea. Let's go and see a bearish example and then we'll go ahead and wrap up the video. All right, as I was hunting for bearish examples, I went ahead and found this one as well, uh, which is gonna showcase the projected defined ranges again, but it's also gonna showcase a time where that middle uh, middle point um, re second stage accumulation um, does not happen for a long time. So, but, it, but it's gonna showcase how you could still use it for, for a bigger directional bias. So this is a weekly candle right so let's say this week is about to open and you have this here now we don't know we do not know if this is going to turn into an order block just yet okay we don't know if price is going to trade beneath the low but we know that this has potential to right if price were to roll over then this would be a new order block in the range going lower okay so how do we know if that's going to happen how do we know if price is actually going to run down here and gain it well projected to find ranges let's hop down into a lower time frame let's take it to a four hour and the week opens now so if price in this case is now below the weekly and it comes back up tests let's go into the hourly look at what's happening price gets below the ungained so this is where the weekly order block gains from the previous week and price gets below the mean threshold here you see, notice how it tries to actually hold it first. It tries to reject ever getting into the PDR or projected defined range kind of uh, circuit of things. But then it actually gets below the mean threshold of the ungained order block. Okay, this is great because now it's holding it. So what does this create? This creates a point A to a point B. So from this holding here, intra week, this could give you huge insights to where price is going to go. Price is going to go try to gain the weekly order block because it's holding the mean threshold of the ungained order block. And it needs to satisfy this point A to point B. It doesn't need to. Okay, I need to restate that. Market doesn't need to do anything. Okay, everything that's ever said on the internet about technical analysis is purely uh, uh, speculation and is purely probabilistic. There is no answers and there is no always. But for the most part, if you see... The mean threshold of an ungain order block like this holding, this onsets uh, the potential to tilt the probabilities in the favor to go to point B. As you can see, it goes right to point B, right? And if you were on a lower time frame and trying to trade inside of something like this, you could have found something like this inversion fair value gap, which you might not even know about, where price closed, traded back up into it, you could go short right there and take it all the way down 
into 558. Why? Because uh, the projected defined range here is already set into motion. Let's go find, uh, but but notice how you don't get that midpoint uh, re-accumulation. And sometimes that doesn't happen, sometimes it does. Personally, I like that setup, but the uh, trade-off is that it doesn't always happen. So let's go uh, find another bearish example here. Here is another example at uh, and on Bitcoin. I came to crypto because I know a lot of people trade crypto, even though I wish they would all switch to futures because it's just a better market. I'm not talking about long-term trading crypto. Long-term trading crypto, you motherfuckers are getting rich. I have a friend who is up like 120 bands this month just because he has a long-term crypto long in Bitcoin. Anyways, this is not what this video is about. This video is about particular fund. Okay, so boom. Okay, <coughs> prices is out all the time, guys. We have a new week opening. Okay, we just swept liquidity above this high. If we don't know if this is going to become an order block or not, we have no idea. It's a mystery, but we do know that when this week opens, we have the mean threshold of this particular candle and we have the low. So if we drop down to a four hour, okay, or uh, maybe even a one hour if we can, when the week starts, notice how we push up into the mean threshold of the ungained weekly order block. If this starts to show a, sh uh, a willingness to hold, which it does, Right? We move away from it after going above it and distributing. What are we distributing off of? We're distributing off of things like this particular fair value gap above the mean threshold. You know, we have an interior liquidity sweep. We fall down on a lower time frame. You're going to see a projected defined range set up here inside of this hourly candle. Even notice how before this gains, we push up into the mean threshold of this hourly candle, right? So you're going to see that there also. But this is a this is a weekly a bigger example here. So we start to notice we start to notice that price is above the mean threshold of the ungained weekly and it's distributing. What is this onset? This onset's a point A to point B to go gain the weekly order block, right? So we already know that the probabilities are on the side of price trading down to this level, right? At about this time, once you break this low. So probably at about this moment in time, you should already be anticipating price to trade all the way down to here and break this low, right? All these levels inside don't matter at all. They're not going to hold uh, because there's a bigger projected to find range in play in the marketplace. Okay. So anyways, so now you could have the midpoint of that, right? Five, five, nine. And I'm not, this doesn't need to be as perfect because it's doesn't really matter. It should be perfect. When you're actually using these, it should be perfect. So notice we try to hold the midpoint for a moment. And then we get below it, and then we should see that second portion of distribution, right? And this is the, the portion that I personally like to play. You can play each side, right? You can play the high, right? You can play the distribution up here and get short up here, targeting down here. This to me has a little bit more confirmation. It looks a little bit lower in the range, but we know that the actual range is all the way down here. So this is actually just halfway through the range. So there is still lower price action to go, so it's not high up in the range at all, right? And price comes back up, and we start to see is distribution occurring on the midpoint. This is this is prime projected to find ranges that this level is about a rocket price down to go gain the weekly order block beneath us. And what happens? Price rockets down to go gain the weekly order block beneath us. These shorts inside of here with potentially like a stop loss up here could be amazing setups. Or you could take the setup in here after the liquidity sweep. There's going to be an interior setup inside of here where you get have a stop loss above this, targeting all the way down. This is a little bit more... Um, Risky in the sense you could go a little bit higher. This is a little bit more confirmation, but it's lower in the range. It's different setups for different personalities. But with that being said, you now know just about as much uh, about projected defined ranges as I'm willing to talk about in this video. It's my concept. I came up with it. I never learned it from anybody. I don't know if anybody talks about it. I don't care. This is something that I figured out on my own. I started using on my own. And I'll be completely honest. I don't like talking about stuff that I figured out. <laughs> <laughs> right it's 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 a bit weird for me because this is like my thing this is what i did and now i'm telling people about it so if you want to learn more about it um it, again join my discord this projected fine range idea goes much deeper than just order blocks uh join my discord join my stuff with that being said you know just about as much about order blocks as i do and hopefully this helps your trading in some way shape or form and if it did drop a like on this video comment down below what you want to see next and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hopefully you have a good trading week ahead and hopefully you have a good day.
With that being said, I will see you guys in the next video.